So you want to start a vlog, but you feel really awkward about filming yourself in public. Honestly, join the club. I've been filming myself for years during my daily life, on my travels, even around my friends and family. And I still feel nervous and awkward sometimes, but that doesn't stop me from capturing my memories and making fun videos about my life. And I've developed some key tactics over the years that help me kind of cope with the awkwardness and feel a little bit more confident about pulling my camera out in public and filming for my vlogs. These tips are not gonna make you completely invincible to social anxiety, but they do really, really help. And it will be the difference between having no vlog and having a vlog that's entertaining and captures your memories. So let's get into it. And thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Okay, I'm gonna let you in on my first tried and true strategy for feeling less awkward when vlogging. I like to call it the walk and talk. Basically, I have a rule where I never vlog standing still. For one, walking while you're talking, so the background's moving behind you, does feel a little bit more dynamic for your audience, but it also means I never have to stop and be in the presence of people who have witnessed me vlogging. In my mind, it would literally be socially unbearable for me to just be amongst a group of people, pick up my camera, vlog for a few minutes, and then put it back down and then just continue to stand amongst that group of people. I know that probably sounds silly, but ultimately all of this is silly. All of this like social awkwardness is completely in our heads. And you know, if you're able to just turn it off, good for you. But this is what I do to try to make it feel less significant in my mind. Okay, so let's break down some of like the practical implications of this. So if I am walking through like a crowded city, let's say I'm traveling, it's a busy place. I will just walk among the crowd and still just pick up my camera and start vlogging to it. And then when I'm done talking, I'll just like shut off the camera and like continue you walking that whole time. There's a bunch of people around, yes, but you kind of get lost in the crowd, so it doesn't feel as awkward. Another scenario, let's say you're walking down the street and it's pretty much empty, but you can see in the distance, there's like two or three people coming down the sidewalk that eventually you're gonna meet, but you have a few minutes before that's gonna happen. To me, that is a perfect opportunity to vlog. So I'll pick up my camera, vlog for a few minutes, and then when I see that I'm like 10 to 20 meters away from the people that I'm gonna meet, then I'll just put my camera down, and then continue walking past them like I'm a normal person, I'll pretend. And then once they're behind me, I'll pick up my camera and keep vlogging. Because again, something that I feel like would be socially unbearable is to continue vlogging while it's just me passing like three people and then I'm just like pretending like this is a normal thing to do and they're not gonna think I'm weird. So I'm just gonna like put it down, maybe even like give them a wave and then I'll continue on. I know ultimately this is all very arbitrary. These are not any kind of like social etiquette rules, but I just find that they make me feel better. And hey, maybe eventually I'll even be bold enough to just vlog standing still in a group of people. But for now, I find these are good strategies as like a gateway to vlog in the least awkward way possible. Always walk and talk. One of the biggest factors in making vlogging in public feel less awkward is the gear that you choose to use, which brings me to my second tip, use low profile gear. When you picture a vlogger, you might be picturing a dude on an electric skateboard with a massive Canon DSLR and a gorilla pod and a huge shotgun mic. But trust me, you do not need to draw that much attention to yourself if you don't want to. In the last year or so, I've discovered a bunch of tools that not only make vlogging in public feel less awkward, but they also help me produce really high quality results. It's no secret that I've become a big fan of filming with my phone because of how convenient and discreet it is. And one of my favorite accessories for filming with my phone is the Insta360 Flow, which is a mobile gimbal. Okay, so quick backstory, in November, I knew that I wanted to get a gimbal for my phone because I was starting to film vlogs with my phone more often and I knew it would really help me get more cinematic shots. So I started doing research into it. I discovered the Insta360 Flow and ordered it for myself. Fast forward to a few weeks later, I get an email from Insta360 asking to partner on a video. So basically it was a match made in heaven. So just know I genuinely bought this gimbal with my own money to shoot vlogs over on my vlog channel. And so I'm super excited to be partnering with Insta360 on this video. So look, Look, the Insta360 Flow has a ton of cool features that are perfect for low key vlogging when you're out and about. First off, it's very compact. I love how it folds down to such a small form factor. I can fit it in a sling bag and it has one step deployment, which means that you can set it up in one smooth motion and it automatically turns itself on. You don't need to worry about awkwardly fumbling with it when you're in the moment and you just wanna get the shot, it just works. 
And when it comes to filming yourself, this is where the Insta360 Flow really shines because it's basically like your little robot camera operator. It has these really cool AI tracking features. So all you have to do is set it up, tap and drag to draw a green box around your subject like yourself. And then the flow will keep you in frame even as you move around. So you can film with your back camera and never worry about framing because the Insta360 flow is doing the work of keeping you in frame. This is also super useful because if you're filming totally by yourself, you can still get shots with dynamic camera movement that make it look like somebody was filming you. Another cool and fun thing, you can actually start recording on your phone without having to walk over and like touch the Insta360 flow. You can turn on gesture control and then just set up the gimbal, get in frame, and then you just show your palm to the camera and that will start the recording. And when you're ready to stop it, you just put up your hand again and it'll stop. And the Insta360 Flow makes it really easy to capture cool cinematic shots with all of their different presets. I personally think motion time-lapse is one of the coolest. You can set up to shoot a time-lapse of like the sunset, for instance, and the camera will slowly pan from left to right, for example, as it's shooting the time-lapse. Okay, and finally, this is one of the biggest factors that actually made me want to get this gimbal. I think it's highly underrated. It has these little slide-out tripod feet so that you can set it down wherever you are and get shots of yourself in the environment. And I honestly think this is one of the biggest things that sets you apart from a beginner vlogger like having footage of yourself in the scene is just so much more dynamic than only having point of view shots so with the insta360 flow not only can you get super smooth footage when you are holding it handheld but it's also basically a mini tripod and all of this can fit in like a really small bag, which is awesome. Tools like this are honestly a game changer when it comes to being able to capture high quality content and feel confident and not awkward when doing it. You don't need to carry around like a massive gimbal or a huge tripod or a really big camera to capture high quality vlogs. You can just take your phone and the small gimbal that fits in your purse and take it out with you. And Insta360 is extending their spring sale just for my audience. So you can actually get 12% off of the Insta360 flow until May 2nd if you use my link in the description. And thanks again to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. Tip number three is to plan your talking points in advance. Nothing's worse than finally working up the nerve to pick up your camera and vlog in public and then you don't know what to say. Sometimes this can happen just because you feel nervous and awkward and all of a sudden, once you pick the camera up, you're really self-conscious of what you're saying. Trust me, I feel this a lot, especially when I'm travel vlogging and I wanna share information about the location, but I always have in the back of my mind, like there's gonna be somebody who's like in my vicinity that knows more facts about this castle than I do and they're gonna know I said something wrong and uh... And so yeah, you can get in your head about it. And that's why it's important to plan and some talking points in advance because you'll feel more confident about what you wanna say when you finally do pick the camera up. I know it can be pretty hard to anticipate what you might want to talk about in a vlog, especially if you're kind of going for a more spontaneous vibe. So what you can do at the very least is prepare a few kind of mini interview questions for yourself. You can even keep them in like a note, in the notes app in your phone to remind you of typical things that you might wanna talk about when you pick up your camera to film. For example, you can ask yourself, what are you doing right now? How are you feeling right now? What are you noticing around you that's interesting or noteworthy? What about this experience is different than you expected? What is the reason or motivation behind the activity that you're doing right now? This at least gives you a starting point, like questions to answer to get you talking so then you don't have to just stand there staring at your camera kind of dumbfounded. And while it can be a really good talking point to start from what are you doing right now, I really encourage you to graduate to those deeper questions like how are you feeling, what are you noticing? Because ultimately the best strategy in a vlog is gonna be to show what you're doing rather than to describe it. People can figure out what you're doing based on the visuals, but then what you can talk about is how you feel about it. And that's what makes for a more interesting vlog. Finally, when it comes to working up the confidence to filming yourself in public ultimately you kind of just need to accept that you're cringy and then let it go like yes some people will find it weird there are some people that will probably kind of stare at you as you're talking to your camera because like not a lot of people do this and it is a little unusual but 
that shouldn't be a reason to stop you. I think one of the biggest things that helped me in feeling more confident and being brave enough to film myself in public is that I've always personally kind of thought vloggers are really cool. Like when I was a teenager, I loved YouTube and I looked up to a lot of YouTubers. So in my mind, like vlogging was a cool thing to do. Yes, of course, not everybody is gonna think that, but in my mind it was, and that kind of made it easier for me to start doing it, even though it was, you know, weird and unusual and people might look at me funny. So I think part of it is changing your mindset and thinking of it as a cool and fun and brave thing to do. And honestly, as long as you're not like invasively filming other people, if you're not disrupting quiet spaces or filming in places where you're explicitly not allowed to film, you're not bothering anybody. You're not hurting anybody. So just embrace that you want to make a vlog and go out there and do it, even though, yes, it probably will feel a bit awkward. And here's the other thing you need to know, back in the day when I was like filming vlogs in high school, I would just tell myself like, oh, someday this is gonna feel so much better. Like if I just had 10,000 subscribers, then I would feel like me making vlogs was like justified and I wouldn't feel so awkward doing it. But the reality is the people around you, like they have no idea how many subscribers you have and they probably also don't care. And even when you do hit those milestones, it doesn't all of a sudden give you all this confidence. At least it definitely doesn't for me. <laughs> it's ultimately all a mindset thing. It's not about how many subscribers you have or any other external metric. You just need to decide that this is something you want to do and that it's important enough to you to feel a little awkward sometimes. And once you embrace that and you start vlogging regularly, that is really the only practical way to start to feel more confident with it is to do it over and over again and realize it's not that big of a deal. And that is really my most tangible piece of advice for you today. You just need to start. Get that first vlog under your belt and you will start to feel more confident. And honestly, I really do think the best way to get started with vlogging is just get out there and start filming yourself on your phone. Not only is it gonna be your most affordable option because hey, you already own this camera, but it also is gonna feel less awkward and more discreet because there are a lot of people out in the world that are taking photos and videos with their phones. Yeah, it might not be for a YouTube video, but nobody needs to know that you're making a YouTube video. Just film stuff with your phone. You can even pretend that you're on like a FaceTime call with a friend while you're vlogging if you want. Okay, so if you want all of my best tips for how to use your phone to capture the most high quality vlogs possible, you're gonna wanna watch this video next. Honestly, this is like my masterpiece because I went into all the details that I struggled to learn over the first few months of vlogging with my phone. And I wish I could have watched this video before I started vlogging with my phone. So go click on this next. And remember the first 50 people to use my link can get 12% off of the Insta360 flow. So check that out at the link in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your vlogging dreams and I will see you in the next video. Bye.